Oh man, so Diddy is being celebrated right now because reports are coming out that he gave his publishing back to bad boy artists, you know, including the, the Locks, Maths, and Faith Evans. But to be honest, this happened over a year ago. I don't know why it's coming out right now. This is more like the promo for the album that's coming out. I wouldn't be surprised if Diddy paid blogs because he has an album that's going to be released on September 15th. So I'm sure he's trying to get good press to support him for that situation. You feel me? So with that being said, we have a former bad boy artist, Mark Curry, going off on Diddy about getting his publishing back. Listen to Mark Curry, then we're going to come back with some commentary on the situation. I don't want the publishing, I want the money. Come on, y'all think he doing a good thing because he give back some publishing? Come on, man. It's not worth anything. And then he he, he don't have the Ciroc or the Deleon, and then he going to give a million dollars to Jackson State like he doing some, some humanitarian type thing. He just trying to do whatever he can to keep his name relevant. So he can go for a new deal because he don't really have nothing that's making him no money right now. He's not even a billionaire no more. So let's talk. I was the first person he called. They said, Mark, I want you to be the first person that know this. I'm giving all my artists back their publishing, which is equivalent to giving back your girlfriend after he done poked her in the booty and raped her and did everything that he got all of the worth out. It's like a spider went in and sucked all of the, the, the insides out of it and then give it back. That's disrespectful. I told him, why don't you just keep it and pay me? And it hurt. That's like giving back my girlfriend, but you done got four kids with her. Took my girl from me 10 years ago, give it back. Ten, I got a 10-year-old son and a twins and all of that, and they his. whoop he do whoop he do Why he didn't just keep that and give everybody $2 million? You know what I'm saying? Why he ain't just keep that and give everybody a million dollars? How come he ain't say, I'm sorry for, you know, what I may have caused in, in your life and, you know, what I may have taken from, taken from you and your family? I know you could have ate with these over the years, but I took it and I was soaking it up. So really, only thing he doing is confessing. Everything that I own belong to somebody else. But y'all still think he's doing something nice? He's not doing nothing nice. He's just giving back what he never should have had in the first place gave back to publishing it's almost like i tell i'm telling everybody what he just did was it's an insult he, he should have gave me the money and kept the girl you know i took the girl you slept with her it was my girlfriend at first you slept with her you used her you abused her you was walking around getting all the money off of her and then now all of a sudden you have the kindness in your heart to give it back give her back to me i don't want her I since moved on. I cut my losses back then. Man, I, you should have seen when he called me. He was like, yeah, I'm giving you back your publishing. I'm like, man, I tell you what. I was trying to do everything in my power to let him keep the publishing and just tell him to send me like a million dollars or two million dollars. That's what I really wanted. You know what I'm saying? That would have really, really helped me out at this time right now. I could have went and got myself back on what I need to be on, went, you know, got back out a little bit. But you know what? I don't need the publishing. I need the money. All right, so OG was cooking on that one. Eye. But younger artists, don't, don't ever say what he said. Never ask for the money first. Get your publishing first if you're a younger artist. Mark Curry's situation is different, okay? There's a reason why he's saying, fuck the publishing, I want the money, okay? So this is um, Mark Curry's discography, you feel me? This is from discogs.com. So let's look at this. Two single releases, that's in the discography. Um, 34 appearances, 69 credits. So the single releases, let's click on those. That right there is... P. Diddy, Black Mob, Mark Curry, Bad Boy for Life. This song right here went number 13 in the UK single chart. Number 33 on Billboard Hot 100. 13 on Billboard R&B and Hip Hop. So it did pretty well, but you know, we got three artists that's on the song. Black Rob and Mark Curry. So also, he has credit for this song. G-Dep, Kane, Mark Curry, Loon, P. Diddy, Black Rob. That's Let's Get It Remix, y'all know that's the, the Harlem Shake song, you feel me? So these are the two single EPs he has released as an artist. So he has 34 appearances, but scratch that. We trying to get to the credits. 69 credits, so featuring and presenting 33. Writing 31, production 3, instruments and performance 2. So let's go to the feature real quick. Let's look through that. A lot, this is probably a lot of writing credits or even probably doing some work behind the scenes work on these songs right here. Once again, the songs that stand out to me from the South. I'm from the South, by the way, letting you guys know. But I want to paint this picture. The songs that stand out is the Let's Get It and Bad Boys for Life. Those songs that stand out to me. But it's important to know that because I'm going to land this plane. The written by an arrangement. Some more songs, you feel me? So you wrote a lot of songs. Okay, so let's land this 
this plane now the reason why mark curry don't give a damn about his publishing at this point in time because these songs are aged they're old no one's listening to these songs nowadays the best that's going to happen for him is if some reason the bad boys for life song may get some placements as far as in movies or on a commercial or something like that you may have that happening so that will let him be able to get some money for that the bulk of the money that these songs will make is already long gone diddy has spent that invested that flipped that a thousand times that shit is gone it's not going to happen that way so that's why he's saying for the publishing i want the bread newer artists never say that you want your publishing because you will be able to reap the benefits of all those things i just mentioned as far as placements in movies video games tv shows commercials all those different things placements everywhere so once again, Mark Curry is valid in his reasoning. Now, what happens to newer artists nowadays is what they do is um, they try to leave their publishing deals outside of the record deals and do publishing contracts with separate people. So the record deal will be one thing and a publishing deal will be something different. So basically a different company is now controlling the publishing and they get a percentage of how much they can sell their music basically. They manage the different placements and things of that sort as far as everything I named before with music videos, movies, video games, commercials, TV shows, all that stuff. Let's speak about Cardi B for example. So Cardi B is signed to Atlantic Records. That's her record label she signed to. But she signed a publishing deal with Warner Chapel. So how does this help Cardi B? To start off, no conflict of interest. If the record labels knows that they're gonna only make most of their money one way, then they're gonna work harder to make money that way. Publishing company knows they need to make their money the other way. So they work harder to make money that way. So you have different companies busting their ass to make their bread and you get your percentage from them working harder. Now, let me make more sense of this for folks who may not understand. All right, so a song has a couple different ways to make money. When a song is made, you have the composition and you have the master. The composition is everything done in the recording session as far as the writers, the producers, sometimes even some engineers. All that shit goes into the composition. When you're in there, people have like sheets and stuff and people fill in what they contributed to the song to make the composition. That's how the writers get their ownership of the song. So if you're an artist and you wrote on a song, you should own some of the composition of the song. But the master is for whoever paid for the recording, the master track. If you're independent and you did your paperwork the right way, that's you. If you're signed to a record label and they pay for all the recordings and stuff, the studio time, that's them. They own the master. Some artists, if they have leverage, they pay for their own stuff. Sometimes they own their masters too. That's an artist like 21 Savage. He first got popping off a mixtape with Metro Boomin. Both of them took care of the master recordings and all that shit. He gained a lot of leverage, then signed a deal. From that point, he already had his connections, already had some money, already had the relationships. He only needed the record company to distribute his records. So he signs a distribution deal with Epic, who's under Sony. He records his own stuff, owns the master, but they get a percentage once they distribute his music. People may think, damn, why would a record company do that? How would they make money off of 21 Savage if they're not raping them? You gotta take into account that all the money that record labels pushing to some artists that never blow, never pop, they just straight losing money. This is an artist they didn't have to put none of that shit in. He's already coming with fans, money coming in already. Someone who's already gonna be making profit for them. They want some parts of that. Now back to Cardi B situation and Mark Curry. Cardi B owns her percentage of her composition through writing. She likes to sell that to a separate company while her record company deals with her masters. I'm going to keep it right there. I'm not trying to lose those who don't care, all right? Now, Cardi was previously signed to Sony Music Publishing. Sony is a separate company from Atlantic Records, okay? Went through that deal, and now before this new album comes out, she's on the Warner Chapel Music Publishing. Now, I do want to note that Atlantic Records is under Warner Music Group. Technically, Cardi did her publishing deal and her record label is under the same parent company. But her initially going to get that other bag from Sony Music Publishing created leverage for Cardi B. So now I'm sure Warner says, shit, we let her go and get all that bread elsewhere. Let's offer her enough money for a publishing deal to make sure she's under Warner's Chapel Music Publishing. So if you're not following alone, that deal that she did with Sony Music Publishing kept Warner honest. It created leverage. In a bad boy situation like Mark Curry's situation, it seems like he never had a chance to keep bad boy honest in that situation because everything was automatically going to bad boy. He couldn't go ahead and work out new deals elsewhere and try to finagle the situation. But also, the bigger you are as an artist, the more leverage you have to play this game. You feel me? Negotiate these deals. But I just want to cover this right here. Understand what OG saying right there. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section below. I'm going to get up out of here, though. It's your boy Stacy. Yo.